<laughs> Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming today. We're so honored to have everyone. Um, I'm Kelly Buss, I'm one of the co-chairs of the Physical Activity Committee on the MAP uh, Collaborative for Will County. And um, this is Lisa, I'm going to have Lisa introduce herself. And I'm Lisa Bohonic, I'm the Executive Director of the CW Avery Family Alliance City in Plainfield, and I am also the co-chair of the Physical Activity and Nutrition Work Group of the MAP Collaborative. And uh, we're really excited that you're all here today, and I just want to take a moment to introduce Eric Bishop. He's one of our newest wellness directors at the YMCA, and he is going to be leading us in a quick stretch break after that delicious lunch. Nice. Yay. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> so, how's everyone doing? Good. 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 All right, so we'll be, we'll, we'll be fair about this, be quick. I know we just had a nice little lunch, so nothing too strenuous here. So all I need to do is, you know, that feels so good after that. All right, so what I'm going to have everybody to do, I'd say first thing out of the gate, we're all kind of sitting right now. It um, always feels really nice to do. Um, we're just, with the first exercise, we'll do a couple things down the, the line. We'll work kind of from our legs all the way back up to our body. Um, we're all sitting right now, so the first thing I'm going to have you guys all do, let's all get our feet fat. Uh, Flat. So, you know, I'm gonna grab a chair, I'll show you guys. We'll start with us while we're sitting. Feels nice, right? Easy. Real easy. Okay. First one I'm gonna have you guys do, we're gonna be right here, real easy, a trunk twist. So just come through, take your opposite arm, grab, and then just a nice be gentle. Um, don't separate your spine from your hips, so don't pull too hard. And you're just gonna keep your feet forward, body forward, knees forward, and you're just gonna hold that stretch. And you're going to try to hold that. Generally, we're not going to hold it for as long as you want to. When you're holding stretches, you want to try to hold those for about a minute, okay? So we're just going to have hold this for well, maybe another 10 seconds or so. And you just want to have a nice little tug. You want to breathe in through the nose. And then out through the mouth. And then go in a little bit of a deeper stretch each time you do that, okay? It's going to be the same with every stretch we do today. All righty. All right, so we're going to relax. We're going to come back to the other side now. Opposite arm. And then grab and twist. So it's really nice exercise, really easy, nice little stretch for the low back, a little bit of the obliques. I know that there are times where we sit quite a bit, and well, if you've got anything going on with your low back, this is one of those things that definitely will help a little bit in terms of just relieving some pressure on your spine, okay? So we're gonna go breathe into the nose, and then out through the mouth. Good, okay. All right, so we're gonna relax there. So make sure we're not going to get too sleepy after lunch either. We're going to stand up now. So we're all going to pop up. Perfect. Ditch the chair. So first one we're going to do now, we're going to do a toe touch. So now if you can't touch your toes, you don't have to try to strain. I don't want anyone to blow on a hamstring or Achilles here. So, uh, <laughs> so what you're going to do, feet are going to be forward. You're going to basically come down. You're going to allow yourself just to drop at the hip. Let your arms dangle. Okay. And just kind of get a feel for it. Keep your legs straight, we're not going to lock them, I don't want anyone passing out. So legs are going to hang nice and straight. And what you're going to do here, once again, you're going to breathe into the nose, and then out through the mouth, and as you do that, you're going to reach a little bit deeper each time. Now, if you can't quite get to the toes, start with the, your shins, and then work your way down your shin to your ankle, and then from your ankle to your foot, and then foot slowly to the toes. So each time, you're going to basically just take a deep breath in, and then out through the mouth. And then a little deeper each time. We'll do that four, four or five more times, okay? Into the nose, out through the mouth. Should we get a little deeper each time as we do that, okay? Should feel really nice in the hamstrings. We're stretching the back of the legs right now. Into the nose, <laughs> out through the mouth. There we go. And then you just want to hold that a little bit, okay? <laughs> Come on up. How'd that feel? It's nice. It's good for the low back. You know, low back and hamstrings is really nice. Okay, so next exercise we're gonna do, we're gonna bounce a little bit, all right? So we're gonna take, we're gonna plant one leg. If you wanna have a chair or a table or anything nearby, you can have some. What you're gonna do, we're gonna bring the leg up, okay? We're gonna pull it to our chest. Alrighty, so this is a nice little hip flexor stretch. Alright. So a little bit of a balance component here. We're testing our balance. If we need any help with balance, come see me at the Morris Y, okay? I'll help you. Alright, so what we're doing here, we're not trying to pull our leg out of our socket, we're just trying to gently grab our shin and then pull gently up with our knee coming up to our body. Okay, so it's a little bit of the hip flexors there. Same movement, we're going to take that leg, swing it back around, we're going to try to... Oops. 
These are the wrong shoes to wear for this, I'll tell you. We're going to bring our leg around. There we go. And what you're going to do, I'm losing my balance. <laughs> I mean, my best is a Y. You come see me and then play a field Ah, there you go. You gotta find something to look at, so there we go. So, what you're gonna be doing with the balance here, you're gonna grab your leg gently at the ankle. You're gonna try to have your, your foot pointing down. Your foot. Your knee pointing down. You're gonna gently pull at your ankle. Alright, and you're gonna try to maintain a nice tall posture. And as you're doing that, you're gonna feel a nice stretch in the front of your thigh. It's gonna be your hip flexors, okay? So, these muscles get really, really shortened when we're sitting a lot. And then when you do that, you're going to start feeling, you, you can feel different issues with your low back. Once again, you can also feel some discomfort with your glutes, your butt. So this is a nice one to do. If you've been sitting all day, it just feels really nice. Relax. Come on down. Last one for that same leg. A lot of balancing, right? So I'll give you guys a break. If you don't want to stand on this one, you can do it both seated, standing or seated. So I'll do the seated one first. I'll show you. So we're going to do the glute one. So standing, it will look like this. We'll grab our leg right here. And you're gonna hold it just like this. Okay. Do you want a deeper stretch? They. <laughs> you want a deeper stretch? You can also take the leg itself and pull up like this. It's gonna help you with the glutes. Okay. Seated. If you guys want to just focus on that a little easier. Simply cross the leg over, grab a seat, and then gently push down on that knee. A little easier to do. You should, should feel this a little bit in your glutes, okay? So that's what we're going to feel on that side. All right, we'll relax. Do the other side now, okay? So back on up. Legs going to be to our chest. Relaxing, right? Good. Okay, we'll bring it back down. Like behind the body. Tuck. Right there, just like so. Anyone feel like this is presidential fitness gym class again? <laughs> Ooh, there goes me. All right, now everyone drop and give me 10 push-ups. No. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. All right, down, and then that leg come back up here. Whether you want to sit or stand. I'm falling over. There we go. Yeah, for me, I, I drive an hour right now for commute to and from work, and uh, I'll tell you, I do these every day. It feels really good. It just helps loosen up everything on those hips. Okay? All right, so they've got that done. All the hips are good. The next one we're going to do, we're going to stand up back up again. Really easy. We're just going to take our hands. We're going to reach up as high as we can, and then you're just going to try to think of it like you have magnets in your hands, and the magnets are pulling you to the ceiling. So you're going to reach, then you're going to reach higher. You want to really puff that chest up and just keep trying to reach as high as you can, okay? As you do that, really try to pull through your chest. So we're just trying to really take a lot of that stress and pressure that we get through our spine throughout the day and just extend the spine, okay? So it should feel really, really nice. Real easy, just as we do it, into the nose and then out to the mouth and reach higher, okay? There we go. Not too bad, right? It's good. All right. So a couple more we'll do really quick. So as we're moving through it, um, really easy one. We're going to take our arm, cross over our body, and just a nice little stretch of the arms. It's arms and the shoulders. Right? Easy. You can get really, get really creative with it. You can do like a little sprinkler, get some exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up some dance moves with it. Do the Macarena. <laughs> Could work. Nice little transition, you know. Come on. <laughs> Next arm. <laughs> Put a little, little, little jazz into it. Yeah, so just back of the arm, a little bit of the shoulders, a little bit of the lats. Back right through here and up through here. Okay, we'll bring the arm up overhead and pull down. Real easy. Once again, get a nice little stretch there through the tricep, so the back of our arm. And then it can get into here a little bit. We'll, do, we'll follow it up in a second. Okay, so it feels really nice, easy, ah, comfy. <laughs> no one should be hurting, no straining. Okay, so now we'll take that arm, 
We'll put this one down, we'll bring this arm up, and we're just going to reach over, okay? Just a little gentle reach. We're not trying to really extend and like, you know, get ourselves almost to a 90 degree angle here. We're just trying to gently reach and grab. You should feel it all down the side of your back and into your, your uh, well, your obliques. Okay? Sure. Now we'll come down. Opposite arm. So once again, if we're doing a lot of driving, you know, we're on our keyboard a lot, um, you know, if we're watching a lot of TV, it's very easy for us to all get stuck in that forward head lean, that position where we're just, you know, we, we tend to get into this role. This is going to be some of these exercises that just helps release some of those tight muscles and just helps everything feel a little bit better in the neck, the shoulders, and the torso. All right, we're going to bring that arm down, and then opposite side. This feels really nice. So we'll hold this for... Oh, a couple more seconds here. So we'll breathe into the nose. You want to keep trying to use that. You want to really try to breathe from your diaphragm deep down in your belly. It's going to help you get a lot more air into you, and it's going to help you feel really rejuvenated, relaxed. Good. All right, and the last one we'll do, really easy, arms behind the head, and then really pop up the chest and push your head back into your hands. Okay? Really nice. Big, tall chest. I always I tell my clients, you know, you want a big, tall chest, proud chest, think like seventh grade, you see a cute boy, cute girl, you want to look really nice, really presentable. My mom would say, don't be a lurch, you know. So just nice and tall and proud, big chest, and then push your head gently into your hands. You should feel a nice stretch through the chest and the arms. Okay. And that's it. Easy, right? Peaceful. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. At this time, I'd like to welcome Sewell Lennox, the Executive Director of the Will County Health Department, as well as the Chair of the Will County Map Collaborative, to the podium for a welcome and opening remarks. <laughs> stretches and I learned a couple of new ones and that was a really good idea especially coming being at a worksite wellness uh, uh, event here all of us can take that back to our workplace and, and do those stretches and, and uh, feel better every day so as uh, Lisa said my name is Sue Olenek and I'm the executive director of the health department I also sit on the MAP executive committee I want to thank I want to this opportunity to thank and Kelly for this nice event. We did a really great job. And um, it's put together very well, so thanks so much. Um, we're going to start the uh, awards here for the presentation for the We Will Work Healthy Awards. Um, the MAP group created these awards back in 2012, and it was out of the Chronic Care Action Team Committee that did that. It began as a biannual award process, and of course we're encouraging all work sites to work better, large and small, public and private, we want as much participation as possible. We are excited to announce starting this year that We Will Work Healthy um, Awards will be an annual initiative, so that's a great thing. Business, businesses today will receive one of the following awards, and there will be an honorable mention, a bronze, silver or gold, with gold being the most prestigious. Today we will also have one recipient of the innovative award based on a program or policy that stands out among the typical. This year we have nine awardees, so that's wonderful. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get some updates. We're going to have an update from uh, some committee chairs. Sorry, I was doing a Facebook Live. Yeah. Uh, Will County Health. Uh, yes. Let's start my page. Thank you. Okay. So it is my pleasure to introduce first um, Tina Bona. She's a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator in our diabetes center, and she's on the Diabetes Chronic uh, Chronic Disease Committee for MAP. So I've been 
selected to speak about uh, what our committee did um, during the last year uh, to help people in the community with diabetes. Uh, we were a small but mighty group, and we developed a resource manual that will be available online, and we developed then a flyer. And our flyer, everyone has a copy of the um, flyer and then the manual. We don't have enough manuals for everyone because this isn't supposed to be a print. Uh, manual it's available online um, but our flyer it um, talks about the high incidence of people with prediabetes most people don't even know it there's some questions and then there is a link at the bottom here which goes to the map website and our icon for diabetes is first and they click on it and they will open up to this which gives so much information about diabetes and we did work an entire year on this with many different people to get the most uh, needed information, maybe not everything a person needs to know, but good resources. Um, and so we're trying to figure out as a group uh, what we can do now. Um, we discuss possibly throughout Will County once a month having a screening. We're just in the beginning talks. We don't know if we're going to combine with another group, but um, uh, this is the fruits of our labor. So um, take a look at it. and. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Cindy Jackson. She's the Community Health Education Program Manager at Will County Health Department and the Will County MAP Collaborative Food Access Work Group Chair. Try to say that five times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, for the past year, I've had the honor of chairing our Food Access Work Group, which is a brand new work group that we started under the MAP and our goal is to reduce household insecurity. So I'm just going to inform you some of the things that we're doing, and if you want to get involved, let me know. We'd be happy to have more people sitting around the table. We do have a pretty, and there's other people here that are in the work group as well. Um, so what we're doing to tackle household food insecurity is looking at communities across Will County with high rates of food insecurity. So there's zip codes that we're addressing with things like mobile pantries. So in 2018, our work group had coordinated 11 mobile food pantries um, in different communities. We've distributed 59,000 pounds of food so far with, to 3,187 people using 168 volunteers. Mm -hmm. We still have three more mobiles that'll be in 2018. Um, we did, our group wrote a grant that we received that is funding six of the mobiles that we're doing. And then we also have eight others that are funded by partners and different corporate sponsors. Another thing we're doing is working with the founder of Micro Pantries. If you haven't seen a Micro Pantry in, the, in Will County, there's one outside of Presence, there's one outside the Health Department, um, there's one outside of the YMCA on Briggs Street. So Micro Pantries are basically small pantries that are open 24 hours a day. Um, in Will County, when we started this work group and when we got, when we began to work with Jeff Everhart, he is the founder of the Micro Pantries. He's also the owner of Easy Auto on Larkin Avenue. He started this um, just to address the large homeless population that he was seeing at his work site um, on the corners, trying to get money to pay for the hotels. So he thought of the micro pantries. And when he started working with us, um, he had 10 micro pantries in the Crossville County. And he also has them outside of the county, outside of the state even. And now there's 23 that he has expanded to in Will County. Another way you can help is if you want to donate food. We will have um, all the micro pantries available on, there's a website, we've created a map, so you can see where they are, you can find the location, and you can go and donate. The theme with those is take what you need, um, give what you can. So they're open for anybody to put donations inside of the micro pantries at any time. Another thing we've done is we have um, created a comprehensive list of food pantries. There is not a food pantry list anywhere in the county that existed that had all the food pantries listed. So um, we have found out that there are 54 food pantries in and across Will County. So those will become available on a, the county map that we're putting together. We have already created an interactive map, um, but it's got the micro pantries listed. And I will make the website available to everyone here so you can access them. And then we're also working on food insecurity screening. So what we've developed is a screening tool to ask two questions to find out if people have um, insecurity for, like, they don't have access to food or low access, not enough money to buy food. 
And then if they do screen positive, they will be provided food or resources for food. So President St. Joe's actually have started a um, convene and intervene program where they are screening people and, with their dietitians with these two questions. And if they screen positive, they get a box of fresh food every week for six weeks. Um, and that's a collaboration with the Northern Illinois Food Bank. That's what we are currently doing. I'm sure it will grow. If you are interested in food insecurity, let me know. You can join our work group. I also want to let you guys know a little bit about what the uh, physical activity and nutrition work group is doing. So obviously one of our big initiatives is the we, will, we Will Work Healthy Awards. But another um, initiative that we do is the Rethink Your Drink initiative. And uh, there's a website and you can get materials that you can use in your work sites. And it just is simple um, signage to encourage people to choose drinks that are less sugary. So those are some of the big things that we are doing. And as the other work groups, we would love anyone to join our group. And at this time, we're going to do our awards presentation. Uh, we are um, going to present nine awards today. And these are going to go to businesses who are investing in the health of their employees throughout our county. To be eligible for this recognition, Will County employers must complete a special application detailing wellness activities that address health promotion and education, opportunities for physical activity, mental health, environmental health, nutrition, and safety. Gold recognition is reserved for employers that can document a positive measure measurable change in employee health by completing a gold award essay, describing a positive health outcome stemming from their wellness efforts. We will present one gold award today. In addition, we have two silver awards, five bronze award winners, and one honorable mention. So we have one honorable mention that's Three Rivers Manufacturers Association, and they were not able to attend today. Um, our first bronze winner is Easter Seals of the Joliet Region. And I hope you came prepared to take a picture. Our next award goes 
goes to the Will County Health Department, also a silver award. time out of your day to come together and, and do something good for Will County. So I want everybody here just to give yourself a round of applause right now. Let's give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. So, uh, we have so many people in here that got awards and you know how inspiring is that we are making a change you know in the county one person at a time. With that I it, this comes at a perfect time. I'm going to start my uh, presentation off with a poem that I wrote because I, I heard that the first seven to 30 seconds of any presentation, you decide if you're going to listen to someone. Or not. <laughs> so everyone in here has their pencils, you know, going to decide if they're going to doodle before I start talking, right? <laughs> I know, I see. I'm, <laughs> so I want you guys to know, just, just take this in. I want you to know the fire we create can burn for an infinite amount of time beyond the time and space we occupy. The fire we create can be a catalyst for another being that needs a spark to 
to increase their shine. Think about that. The fire we create, it starts in the depths of our soul, in that place that only we can attain, that place that's sacred within you, that motivational place that got each and every last one of you here today. So be a spark for another being that needs a fire. So and remember, with the spark, we can, beyond, we can begin to inspire beyond our time. That's what this is ultimately about, right? We're all here to create a change in Will County. That change that we're creating that started in 2012, right, when MAP came together, it was to create something beyond us, right? That's what we're ultimately trying to do. So with action, with action, we can do that. You know, we, um, I've been to the last four MAP fall forums, and we've come up with so many great ideas. So many great ideas. The key is to put those goals, those ideas, put everything that we come up with into action. We all have a gift. We all have a gift. We all have a place in this space, right? We're all different. So use your creativity. <coughs> Everybody in this room has the capacity to touch one person. And that's the beauty of it all. So I am honored today to talk, to give, to just spill out my, my desire to inspire. Because my first MAP presentation I, I attended, I was so inspired by all the people in this room. And it helped me generate something inside to push forward something else. I have my mentor and uh, Marco Coffey and Irino Coffey over here who gave me a place in space last November to start fitness classes. You know, they believed in me. They, they could have said, Charles, no, we can't do fitness classes in here. But no, it was something that I wanted to do to help out in Will County. You know, so um, it's something that I, I continue to do. And um, so that's something. So just think about what it may be that you you have inside of you that you want to do. We have time, right? We have, I mean, we're here today. So we can start as soon as we leave here. We have all these people in here to network. So use that networking ability to create something. I'm pretty sure there's someone in here that want to connect with you because we wouldn't be here if we wouldn't connect, right? So use that idea, that mastermind. Napoleon Hill once said, all it takes is one or two, all it takes is at least two minds with a common goal to create a mastermind. And that mastermind is an idea. And that idea was started, I remember when Silver Cross decided to have a wellness program. We had a wellness committee with Tina Bono, Kelly Buss, Mark Jepson, Tracy Artist, and a numerous other people. Mandy Sack, I remember that. And it was before the place, the, the wellness program even started. We, it was an idea, it was just an idea. How are we going to come up with that? You remember that, Kelly? <laughs> so, now look at us. And I'm gonna go into this program and show you how Silver Cross's wellness program has grown over the years because we all came together with the common goal. Everyone brought in their own expertise. Um, and what we did was, bam, here we go today, right? So the reason why we did that was because the RAND report, think about it, wellness programs are so important in today's society. The RAND report is an organization that does research for uh, numerous companies and what they decided was look we need wellness programs if we don't have this like people are going to work and spending more time at work than they are with their family right so why not have something in place where employees can get healthy you know it's like all right think about it when you plant if any of you guys garden you want to make sure you have optimal soil for whatever it is you're trying to grow right Right, you gotta make sure that soil is, is enriched in order for that plant, that tree to grow. So you gotta make sure that that environment is nurtured. It's, you're gonna water, you're gonna take care of that place and space. Same thing with the employees, right? So it's important, think about that. If we expect employees to perform at a high capacity, we have to set an environment for them to do that. 
That's a wellness program. It's not just physical, it's mental, it's emotional. That support, when people are working, like I said, most of their time, we're, we're spending with these people. So we have to provide that, that environment for them. So this is something, presentism, presentism is something that has just recently been studied. So there you know about absenteeism, right? People not showing up to work. Now think about people coming to work ill, poor health, exhausted. All that plays a huge role into productivity, right? It goes all the way back to that soil that we're creating. And one thing I can say about Silver Cross, Mark Jepson and Tracy Artis, they have allowed Kelly Buss and I, you know, the flexibility to flourish with our program, to create that nurturing soil, to water that land so our employees, I mean, you can ask, we have some employees in here right now, you know, how the program has grown over time and just creating a, a thriving environment because if people are coming to work just to survive, how are you going to thrive? We're all in this together, right? Right? Right. 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 Awesome, awesome. <laughs> all right, so um, I think that this, this is one of the reasons why health coaching Everything about wellness, the mental health, which we have incorporated into our wellness program. And it shows when people come to work unable to perform, what happens? Look at this. Depression increases. That's huge. And if depression is increasing, look at the other issues that are increasing. People aren't exercise, right? If they're depressed, if they're not able to have that environment, have that information in hand to create that place. So if this is, you can look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie. This was all done by the RAND report as well. And also what increases is people smoking, um, eating healthy, whatever it may mean to you, eating healthy and not exercising, which makes sense. If you're not in a place and space in your mind to, you know, exercise, you're not, you know, it, it all kind of goes together. So that's why. Wellness programs are important, even if it's something just simple. <clears throat> it's just giving information. Information is, is huge, right? We can give information, but also action. Action, action, action. We can give all the information in the world, just like motivation. Motivation can't be something I talk about. It's something that it has to generate within each and every one of us, right? We can give it, but you gotta put it into action. Some people say, motivate me. If you say motivate me, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're not getting it. You have to want to do it, that you have to do it. It has to come from within, because it's not gonna last if Charles Murray say, you have to eat healthy. No, you, it, there's gotta be that place, your why. What's moving you inside? That's where it has to come from. That's the only way it's going to last. And there's studies after studies that have proven that. It, it, it's not going to last if you're not working on it. If you're not changing who you are, no, there's no health coach in this world that's going to be able to help you, help you. That's why what I do is I try to find what that person, what's moving you inside. What's your why? You know, because it's, it's, not, it's easy for me to just give information that I learn, you know, and you're not going to get it if it's not resonating with, with you. So, this is what we've done this year at Silver Cross. Woo! <laughs> Kelly! <That's awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back in 2014, our remix, our program started, <laughs> we had over a little bit over 700 employees join the wellness program. This year, we have over a little bit, almost 1,400 employees. So we almost doubled that in four years, right? And last year, I had a goal of 700 coach calls. The year before, the max number was 500, 556. Last year, I had 720 coach calls. So it's showing that it's increasing. And what have we done this year? 
definitely what we keep, we keep just setting the standards even higher and higher and higher. We're progressing. We have videos. We have Tina Bono uh, doing live videos on how to eat healthy, different eating healthy tips. We have um, the EPA Perspectives come on and give live seminars to our employees about health and wellness and mental health. We have workout videos that Kelly and I, we love doing. And this year we've had 15 live seminars, 32 staff member um, meeting huddles. So we're creating visibility. Every year we're doing something different. So um, I, I have a lot of people would say, Charles, we don't see you anymore. What are you doing? Like, we're creating. We really are. When I'm not doing health coach calls, we're creating things and, and just expanding for next year. Next year is going to be even bigger, guys. And, but it started with 733 people in the wellness program. It created a fire. With one match, you can light 100 candles. One match. The success, it's inevitable. We see our employees succeed. People are changing within. They're losing weight. They're becoming different people. People want to be like that, you know? It's, it's that whole environment. It, it catches a fire, and that's what it's all about. And you know what? They're going home. At the end of the day, their families are seeing them a different person, and that's key, right? Because once you see, once they see that we care, they're going to keep coming. Right? You want to see that we care. That's what it's about. Another thing that's so empowering, so empowering. When we started, we had this green here. These are people in a high risk for diabetes. This year we had no one in high risk for diabetes. No one. And that was, and that, that was during our screenings. That is so awesome. You know, we have a lot more people here in the red because they're not in the green. So it's, it's getting better, okay. one step at a time. The awareness is key. More and more people are going to their physicians to get checkups and things like that. You know, being mindful of those numbers. Those numbers matter because they're not going to lie. So what we did was we created a movement. And there's Tina. <laughs> um, Tina helps us a lot. Thank you so much with, you know, the healthy cooking demos because you really don't want my Louisiana cooking on the healthy cooking demos. Um, and what we did was we continued to do things, to be innovative, innovative, not stay still. When you stay still, it gets boring. So we keep, Kelly and I, we have meetings every week. We're like, okay, what's next? What's next? What are we going to do? And that way, it's progressive. We don't want people to get bored of the wellness program. It's the same stuff we did last year, the same thing. No, no, no. The same. So we are, like I said, we're already ahead in 2019. We're going to turn it up even more in the wellness program. And these are some of the awards we attained during this process, which is awesome. I, I think it's even more than that, right? <laughs> um, so this year we got the Workplace Health Achievement Award. Which, can we get a, a run from the American Heart Association? <laughs> Sorry, I was like, you got to our own horn sometimes, right? You got to. You, you have to. And we will work healthy. Award. We got the most innovative award. And the goal, I mean, the... I keep getting this one all messed up here, but the goal, I keep saying the goal check, but it's the, <laughs> the green check for um, healthy, the Silver Healthy Cross, Fit local. Silver Cross Fit was through a CDASH grant through the Will County Health Department. Mm -hmm. They're born too. And so if you go in our cafeteria, anything with a green check meets a healthy food criteria based on the American Heart Association. Because it's too hard for people to know is this a healthy choice or not when they're already in a stressful environment. And that was Kelly's baby. She worked really hard on that. So thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> and these are some of our success stories. Woo! Yeah. Wow. It's been successful. Jason, back there, why don't you stand up? <laughs> Diana, why don't you stand up? We just have to keep my ass. Good job. <laughs> 
these are some of our, our couple of our thank you guys for coming. These people have been successful in our wellness program. Different people, right? Wow, congratulations, guys. I mean, it, it took that, that massive change inside, in the internal world, for these people, you know? I, I, I see them now, man, it, it's awesome. It's like a new life, a new beginning. And there's Diana. <laughs> so. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. So, you guys see what wellness can do. Not just Silver Cross, anyone can come up with a wellness program. All you need is a team. All you need is people that believe, that have the same goals, that want to change from the inside out. Because it's ultimately, it's not about us. It's about creating change, right? And also what we did was we created more exposure. Over the summer, what we did was we had Wellness Wednesdays where Kelly and I would come up with different topics and we would create posters and, and go in, and right in front of the cafeteria and the employee entrance and we would be visible for everyone because those two places are well-traveled. So, and we would have different topics. We had a mindfulness topic. We had uh, a sugar beverage topic, you know, just things like that, just being visible, giving that information out there and letting them know that, hey, we're not just, you know, we're here for you guys if you have any questions. So that made a big difference. We weren't just people that's just on the phone, you know, hey, here's your coach call and that's it. We were visible for employees. All right. So I want you guys to know we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, it's a habit. This is something so true. And it's powerful because we have to continue to work on ourselves. This next part of the presentation, you guys have a part, uh, a sheet. This is some of the presentations I've given over the past year and a half that I've come up with for Silver Cross. And I want to share this information with you guys because that's what we're here to do. We have to catch it and release, right? If we have something we have to say, we have to release it because Maya Angelou once said, there's nothing worse than living a life without telling your story. So this is my story. This is my story as a health and wellness coach. You're all different. We are all who we are. We're all individuals. You have something unique about yourself. Own it. Own it. All right? When you get out of here, I want you to think about what can you do to contribute to map and let's put it in action because ultimately we can come together every year and I it's so awesome to see these people getting these awards but we can all do something we can continue to create continue to inspire so what we have to do this is one something my mentor always tell me Charles you got to get out of your head in order for you to become more than what you were yesterday get out of your head Dr. Jody's Dispenza said we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. Most of those thoughts are reoccurring from the day before and the day before. So what happens? When you have that motivating snap right there in your head, you say, oh man, no. I remember where I failed at that. I didn't, I didn't succeed. I didn't continue to go. So what you do, you create that cycle. It continues to, to go around and around. We have to break those paradigms because if we don't do it, you're never gonna make a change. And think about those individuals that lost that weight. A hundred pounds a century, what? What they had to do to, to, to will their mind out of that cycle, right? That's powerful. You have to change, we have to become different people. And that's okay. And if you notice when you start to make a change, some people will say, you, you're acting different. But if it's something for your, for, to better yourself, why not? You have to do that, right? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but today, you can change. You can impact. You don't know who is watching you. When Kelly was introducing me and talking about my kids, it activated something in me. I was going to give you guys all I got because my boys watch Dad every day, you know. And to see those smiles, there's nothing in this world like it. So you don't know who's watching you. So continue. 
to change every day. And remember those 60 to 70,000 thoughts. When you catch yourself in that cycle, break the habit. Break the habit. Something that I like to talk about is creating the new you. Redefine. I, I use this in my coaching a lot. You have to redefine what it is because when you change that, that, that habit, that cycle that has been generating for years and years, kept you in that same place, have a goal in mind. What is that goal that you have in mind for yourself? What's coming from within you? Because every day you're going to have to go back to that place and say, okay, all right, this is what I want to do for myself. Because your, your brain will kick in and try to get you back to comfort. Once you go to comfort, how are you going to change, right? Anything that is worth doing is going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's not meant to be easy. Just like sports, just like when you start exercising. When we start exercising, it's hard. Right? I still remember lifting my first weight. I was like falling off of things like that because it was different. It created an imbalance. But what you do, just like riding a bicycle, once you keep going, woo, you go straight ahead. There's no going back. You're not going to fall off that bike again. Excuse me if I keep my woo. It's, it gets the mojo up. <laughs> and also remind yourself, motivational speaker Jim Rohn once said, wish that things you get better. Don't wish that things get easier. That is so powerful. You got to get better because it is not going to get easier for you. So when things happen, remind yourself of those times where you have persevered and you became a different person. There's got to be something in everybody's life in here where they can go and say, all right, I got back up. I got back up. And sometimes it, it could be from when you were a little kid. And if you're having a hard time now, go back to that place because you know what? You still got it in you. Once you activate it, it's not going anywhere. It's ready to be, to be pushed to the next level. Let's do this. Redesign. You have to redefine and redesign yourself. Once you have been there, once you, you've seen those goals change, once you've seen yourself change, like I said, you become a different person. You're not the same person anymore. But your brain will continue to say, oh, man, don't do that. You know, but you have to keep doing it. They say neurons that wire together, fire together, wire, fire together, wire together. Woo! Got it. <laughs> so what that means is once you keep practicing something over and over, it becomes ingrained in your brain. If you want to rewire that, what do you want to do? Change that habit. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth doing over time. So. Einstein said we cannot say, solve the same problems in the same environment we used to create them. Step out of that place. Step out of that place. And how do you step out of that place? You have to go inside. We can't look to an external place to, to get there. We have to go in. Because everything, you know, we're told you got to look at an outside force, but no, we got to go within ourselves because once we go within ourselves, we can see what's moving us inside because we're all different. What works for one person may not work for another person. So what's stopping you? This was so motivating to me. When I first met Marco Coppi, he told me about Roger Bannister. I, I used to like to run. Roger Bannister was the first person to run a four-minute mile back in 1954 at Oxford University. It was May 6th. The first person to do that. Before then, you know what happened? Doctors said this will never happen. Scientists said this will never happen. Why? Because a human heart would explode. <laughs> this man defined the odds. And after that, that same year, that, actually that same month, another guy, um, Kyle Larkin ran it even faster than Roger Bannister because he's, he, challenged, he challenged himself. And there's many, many people that have challenged the status quo. Challenge it. Why not? We're limitless. If you can see it in your mind, we can create it. Think about it. Apple phones. 10 years ago, right? No, I'm sorry. 20 years ago, we would never think we could 
do all we can do on the phone, pay a bill on the phone. I remember the flip phones. You guys remember those? And I thought that was the limit. Now it's limitless. Phones are like in your eyes and stuff now, right? Like seriously, like there's anything. So we're going to space. These are people like you and I. They tested the limits. There are, there are no limits. Only limit is the limit in our mind that we create for ourselves. So forget all the reasons, whatever it may be, why it won't happen. And believe the one reason why it will, to each and every one of you, there's something in your heart that you want to do. Believe in that one reason why it will work. Whew. All right, so it all has to start from the inside. Like I said, we have to go inside of ourselves. No sacrifices. There's sacrifice, guys. Adversity. Think about it. It all continues. You have to have action, action, action. There's going to be disappointments, but you have to keep going. At action. Criticism. That action. You got to keep moving. We have to keep moving no matter what. Keep moving forward. Doubts. You have to keep moving. Moving forward. At action. Persistence. That's action, right? You got to keep it going. Failure. We're going to fall sometime. It, we, it, it, that's a good thing. It kind of gives you seasoning for your reasoning of what you're doing, what you're doing. Without it, how are you going to have a story to tell? All those successful people, they fail. We, we all fall. It's okay. But what are you going to do? We got to learn from that. You may not be good at whatever it is that you're going for. Like, I wanted to play racquetball. I thought I was going to be like uh, Andre Agassi. I know he played tennis, but I wanted to be the racquetball of Andre Agassi. No, I like bust my head playing racquetball. But you know what? It allowed me to, to learn I wasn't going to play racquetball <laughs> and do something else. But the struggles, the late nights, everything. You guys, come on, we have all been there. School, think about college, whatever it may be, work. You're here now, there's a journey. We all have a place that we've been. And that success at the top, it all came from what's deep inside of you, that struggle. Some, some of us struggle longer than others, but it's okay, we have to keep going. That action forward, faith and forward, that's all I ask, just have it. Faith and forward. There's no reason to go back. Just keep it going forward. So once that happens, I love this by Dr. Wayne Dyer. If you change the thing, the change, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. Yes. Yes, think about that. There's something in us that we can change. We, there's something. You know, look at it differently. Look at it from a different angle. I used to tell a story of myself growing up as a 12-year-old boy. I was stopped two years ago by someone. They asked me my story. They, they stopped me. And I wondered, why did they stop me? I'm not that 12-year-old boy anymore. I'm 34 now. That story has changed, right? You have to look at it from a different angle. I'm an adult now. I'm not that 12-year-old. That was powerful. That was one of the most powerful things someone can do for me because it created forward momentum for myself within. So I'm going to tell you guys a story about this. I got time? All right. So forward momentum. Five years ago, I was playing soccer with my middle son, Oliver. He said, Dad, you have to join me in with this, this soccer game. You know, and um, I'm a runner. I was running. I never stretched. I was 31 at the time. I, I didn't stretch. I'm like, you know, I'm still young. I forgot I was 31. So anyway, I would just run for miles and miles. And I thought I could do this forever. So at this soccer game, I, uh, I wore my running shoes. It was in grass. The first play of the game, I go to kick. I'm trying to show off, of course. I fell in the grass. Just a fall. I hear a pop. My kneecap ended up way up here. I'm screaming. I'm in Silver Cross, this ER. Here is I had never had an injury exercise since I was 15 years old. I was in balance in my life. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I can eat what I want at this time. 
<laughs> because I, I ran all the time, but this internet created something. A, from this comfort zone, balance of comfort zone, Murphy's Law, if you know anything about Murphy's Law, anything that can happen will happen. Bam! Mm -hmm. That incident, I was three months off from work. In the summertime, my kids were going swimming. I'm stuck in the house. I'm like, seriously? For like six weeks, I'm in the house. Can't move. For the first time in my life, I was forced to sit still. What happens when you sit still? Mm -hmm. Your brain. Your brain forces you to think sometimes, right? <laughs> so during this time, I'm like, I have all these emotions. I didn't want to watch what was on TV. I'm like, okay, there's only so many movies I can watch. I, I started watching The Walking Dead. That's when I. <laughs> <laughs> so once that was over with, it was an imbalance because I was forced to sit still. So when I was forced to sit still, I started dwelling. Why? What, what's, what's going on with me? Think about it, if any of you have had an injury and you were forced to sit still, you know how it is. Oh man, especially when you've been active your whole life, you, you don't like it at all. It <laughs> Weight started creeping up. I'm sitting, I'm wondering, what am I gonna do with myself? The doctor said, Charles, you can't run again. You know, that not seven to 10 miles anymore. Anyway, I was devastated. But this is just my example. We all have our own examples, all right? So that dwelling place started. So what I can do is I can stay here. I can propel or I can dwell. So I went deep within. I started working on myself from the inside out. I started meditating and just listening to uh, positive affirmations and things like that just to kind of work on myself because that's all I could do, the mind was starting to, that chaos, you know, when the background noise kick in. as well. You can't do this anymore. You're going to be like this the rest of your life. So after that, I decided I'm going to start yoga, to start working on things, stretching and things like that a lot more. And it helped me. It, it helped me. Think about that place and space where you've been where you had to climb yourself out of. And this is just a, just a page in the story, and we all have numerous things that we can say, right? That crew, we had to push forward. But some people stay in that dwelling state forever, right? It would have been easy to stay down here and say, poor me, poor Charles. No, no, it, it wasn't in my DNA to do that. So I pushed forward, and that's when I started saying forward momentum. Okay, this incident happened for a reason. And what it did was it gave me a reason to get better. Because I could have, yeah, not stretched anymore. <laughs> but now, I love stretching, so thank you. Thank you for the stretching. <laughs> no problem. So what you have to do is once you get out of that place, it starts to rebuild your will. You have to. I mean, because if we don't, what's gonna happen? You gonna, the incidents are gonna happen again, or you can stay in that place. So I changed my internal environment. Think about that time when you change your internal environment to get better at something. And like Abraham Lincoln said, there are no incidents in my philosophy. Every effect must have its cause. The past is the cause of the present. The present will be the cause of the future. Wow. So what are you doing? Cause and effect. Getting better. Or you can stay where you are. It's up to you. Bless you. You can stay where you are. We have to work on ourselves. There's no outside force that's going to make us change for us. We have to do it within. These people here are like us. Like I said, the Apple phone, Steve Jobs, he got fired from Apple, right? Mm -hmm. you, we all seen the movie, you know, they said he was crazy or, or whatever. Whatever, you know, they, they say the people that are innovative, they, we label them, right? So he's challenged the status quo. Dr. Joe D. Dispenza, what he did was, and when he was 29 years old, he was running the Boston Marathon, got hit by a car, broke his back. This guy was laid up for six to eight months in a hospital. So he created a space in his mind. He went deep within and imagined his body repairing itself from the inside out. And you know what? The doctor said this guy would never walk again. 
He's walking now. He's a neuroscientist. He went within. And his, his vertebrae and his spine were changed. He's, it's amazing. This guy here, Nick Vuvale, motivational speaker, father, swimmer. He has no arms. And no legs. And no legs. And he can still swim. Why? Because he didn't accept the no. pair of the limitations that was placed on him. No, there are no limits. If you want to be able to do it, we can do it. Our mind, we are the, the limits, right? Dr. Martin Luther King, he said, I have a dream. It was so powerful. I'm living that dream right now because somebody believed. If you believe deep in your heart you can do something, if you believe deep in your heart there's a change going to be made, it'll vibrate. You're going to make it happen. You can make it happen. So you have to believe in yourself. My Angelo, she didn't speak for many years because of trauma that happened in her life. She was quiet. Became one of the most prolific poets ever. You know what these people all have in common? Zig Ziglar, his father died when he was 12 years old. He became a motivational speaker. That same year, his younger sister passed away too. They all came, something happened in these people's lives, right? We, got, we bleed the same blood. They made a change, they had a vision, and they created it. We can all do that. That is so powerful, but you have to keep it going. When it gets hard, just like that pyramid, I mean, I'm sorry, that um, iceberg of success, when it gets hard, you gotta find something that's gonna con make you continue to push forward, action. Action, because you know what? Things will get better over time. You have to keep pushing. Zig Ziglar said that people all, people often say motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing, so that's why it's recommended daily. I love that quote. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you all for giving me the time to hopefully like the spark inside you to touch another being because ultimately we are all here for something greater than us, right? We're all here to create change, but it has to start within us because we all, at the end of the day, once we take our badges off, we're people. We, we, have, we have things we have to, to get through, so, but we have to change within first before we can create change on the outside. So thank you guys for your time and thank you.